You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Consult a Counselor series. In this series, I answer parenting related questions so that you can be present and at ease with your child and live life mindfully. Today's question is, this middle school drama has me nuts. My daughter's circle of friends always has some drama happening, and somehow she's always at the center of it. What can I do to help? Well, as a middle school counselor for 14 years, trust me, I get it. First and foremost, it's important for us to understand that between the ages of 11 and 14, our kids are in a very interesting developmental stage. They're really moving from children slowly into adolescence. And naturally, because of this developmental stage, they just have the natural urge to become more independent from their families, meaning that they're going to turn to their friends much more often than their own parents as a source of advice and, believe it or not, as a source of expertise. So right now, according to them, you may not know much. (laughs) But it is important to still offer that support and still be there for our kids because even though they may think that we don't know much, they do still need us because they're still learning to make appropriate decisions for themselves and how to resolve conflicts, especially when it comes to dealing with the influence of their peers. They're still learning how to handle big emotions like fear and frustration and rejection. That's a big one. They're still learning on how they fit into their peer group, believe it or not, and how they identify themselves as a part of that group. And they may even go out on a limb, do things that you would think that they typically wouldn't do, and they perhaps might not do if they were by themselves. And they're also learning to accept their point of view and how that goes in line, coincides, or differs from other points of view. So notice all of those statements that I just stated said learnings. They don't have any of these aspects mastered yet. And that's going to be evident in the way that they act and the choices that they make. So first and foremost, how can you help your kid? The first thing to do is listen. And for some parents, it may be tough to genuinely listen because the stories that you're hearing (laughs) may sound very nonsensical and they may sound very unimportant to you. But we must remember that right now, whatever your child is going through, even if it may sound like it's not important, it is their whole world. So even though it may sound silly to you, it is everything to them. And really taking the time to listen and listen genuinely and with intention, that is going to be the key of helping your relationship with your child. And that then is going to open the door for them to let you in instead of blocking you out as if you were another adult who just doesn't care or doesn't care to understand. The second tip is, is to not only listen, but to be non-judgmental. It's so important for us to listen without making any assumptions. And it's also important for us to not place judgment on what is happening. And this may be really hard, especially if you're not particularly fond of a friend or two that they may have. But do try to listen non-judgmentally and do try to see things from your child's point of view. And before offering any feedback, ask questions so that you can get the full story, even if it's long-winded. As parents, we also have to remember that we are the adults in the situation. We don't want to insert ourselves into tween drama unnecessarily because one, we're not going to be able to solve all the issues. And two, we don't want to create more drama. So remember, we can be there to listen and to help our child understand the choices that they make and the outcomes of those choices, whether they be positive or negative, but we should not become a part of the scenario. 
Now, you mentioned that your child is at the center of this drama. This is something that you really want to consider. Is your kid part of the problem? And that may be hard to swallow at first. Remember that there's always many sides to every story. So keep an eye on your child's social media, on your child's text messages, and on her interactions with her friends. So for example, during carpool time, that time is golden. Don't say a word and just soak everything in. It's really funny at this age, tweens almost forget that there's actually somebody else who's driving them from place to place. And that's where you can get a lot of your information from. And that's where you can see how the kids interact with one another. Then in the evenings, schedule out time for these heart-to-heart conversations where you're actually listening more than you speak, and remember to not insert too much judgment. And then ask your child's questions such as, how do you think you handled that situation? What do you think could have gone better? If you could rewind time, what would you do differently? We want for our kids to try to identify their own patterns over time. We want them to have good self-awareness and for them to think about why they're making the choices they're making and what they're getting from it as well. Now, even despite doing all of these things, there may be circumstances when perhaps your child just needs a new social circle. And this is going to be tough, especially if they all attend the same school. It's at this time that extracurricular activities are going to be of utmost importance because maybe they have a social circle at school for just school stuff. But then if they participate in various extracurricular activities, they may make different friends through those circles. We also want to give our kids opportunities to learn from their mistakes because they're kids and they're tweens. So they're going to inevitably be many mistakes. We also want to remember that we're still the parents. So sometimes a break may be needed, whether it's a break from in-person hangouts or whether it's a break from social media too. And if you're friends with the other parents, you may want to keep each other in the loop and perhaps even try to be on the same page. But despite all of that being said, Do keep in mind that middle school is the time to make new friends. Every single kid is figuring themselves out, whether they appear to be confident or maybe not so much. They are developing new interests and they are weaning out old interests. So also be mindful of that in case you yourself get attached to any parent friends as well, because social circles may change. And all in all, remember that at the end of the day, what's super important to your middle school child today may be old news tomorrow. So sometimes we just have to listen, be the support that they need, provide them with how to make good choices and how to learn from mistakes. And tomorrow is a new day and it may no longer be applicable. So I hope this helps. If you think it could help another mom or dad friend, be sure to share it with them and subscribe to my podcast so that you don't miss the next one. If you have any questions for the Consult a Counselor series, you can always email me at podcast at free to be mindful.com or DM me on Instagram at counselor V de Jesus. And remember in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Thanks so much and catch you next time.